Masters of the Universe Revelations makes certain esoteric aspects of the original show even more clear. To hear more on this, please check out my video titled, He-Man Decoded, He-Man is the Higher Self. Eternia is the center of the universe, and Castle Grayskull is the center of Eternia, because Castle Grayskull represents your gray skull that houses your consciousness which creates all of reality. Snake Mountain represents humankind's lower animal nature. We need our animal nature in terms of taking care of our bodily needs and procreation, but we are not meant to be ruled by these desires, and to do so eventually brings unhappiness. Skeletor, of course, represents giving in to this animal nature, as well as hate, fear, darkness, illusion, lies, destruction, and death. On his staff, he bears the symbol of the devil, the goat. He-Man represents light, life, and love. He is the higher self, that great spiritual potential that is in all of us. His sword represents truth, light, and the soul. Within each human, and in each situation that human encounters, there lies a battle of fear and hope, hate and love, and one must guard the consciousness in the gray skull from the forces of negativity. This is the eternal battle of He-Man. To become a master of the universe is to be the master of your own gray skull, and thus your own consciousness and mind. Sorceress represents the third eye of Horus, and that's why she is the falcon. Her powers are psychic and spiritual, telepathy, clairvoyance, and astral travel. The pyramid at the heart of Grayskull holds the magic that is powering the illusion of Eternia, the simulation of a material reality, and that magic represents pure consciousness. It represents the third eye, the spiritual eye that sees beyond the material illusion. The triangle and pyramid are both a symbol of the number three. The eye within the triangle or pyramid signifies the third eye. It signifies consciousness and awareness. The third eye is the pineal gland. It is the gland that produces dimethyltryptamine, aka the God molecule, when we dream, are born, die, and have spiritual experiences. It represents awareness of one's own existence. As Descartes said, I think, therefore I am. The orb is the eye, is pure consciousness. It is both the light projector and perceiver of the movie that is reality. Magic represents spirit. In the material world, Castle Grayskull just looks like an ordinary castle. When Skeletor opens the Hall of Wisdom, however, there is the Great Revelation. Castle Grayskull is exposed as the true sacred and powerful place that it really is. On the surface, things seem meaningless and ordinary, but underneath it all exists great meaning. To see this greater meaning, one must get in touch with silence and open the third eye. It makes sense that Triclops would be the priest of this technology cult where they worship the so-called Holy Sprocket. After all, he has the third eye, symbolized by the triangle. Not to mention, he literally has three eyes. Just like a false prophet or hypocritical cult leader, he does have a spiritual gift, but it has been twisted into ego. Thus, he leads his flock towards the darkness and off a cliff. Now that fear, negativity, and illusions have taken over the gray skull, the god of the third eye, Horus the Falcon, has turned dark. The spirituality that was once used to help awaken others is now used to turn the consciousnesses of the people to the darkness and thus suffering and mental enslavement. The same spirituality that has the power to raise you to the heavens has the same power to drag you down into the dark depths. Ironically, Triclops uses magic, aka spirit, in order to change people into brainwashed cyborgs, even though he claims he's against magic. Spirituality is the understanding that we are much more than just our flesh. Triclops has altered this idea to the negative, that of machinery being superior to flesh and superior to magic. Magic represents true spirituality, consciousness, and imagination. In Revelations, He-Man fails. His failure is not a physical failure of defeating Skeletor. His failure is that he gives in to hate and does something the original He-Man would never ever do. He kills. In fact, there was one episode in the original series where He-Man mistakenly believes he killed someone and actually gives up being He-Man out of guilt until he realizes it was all a trick played by Skeletor. The He-Man in Revelations, however, 
gave into the darkness, thus Skeletor, the agent of chaos and destruction, succeeds in extinguishing He-Man's light. Fear has succeeded in penetrating the consciousness of this universe, and thus leads to the possibility of total destruction. Though understandable, considering that He-Man's good friend was just murdered, this ideal fantasy of a higher self to strive for has been brought to the harsh reality of imperfection. No one is perfect, not even He-Man. This may be dramatic storytelling, but goes against the original idea of He-Man. The whole point of making a fictional character an idealistic model works well because only a fictional character can be morally perfect. On the surface, Prince Adam's humility seems to make him weak, when in fact, it is this humility that truly makes him greatest among all men. The true essence of He-Man's character is his great selflessness and servitude of others. Thus, he sacrifices himself to save the universe. Tila is essentially a rebellious teenager who is angry at the world as a result of her own lack of self-love, which she tried to blame on He-Man and everyone else. But actually, as Scareglow reveals to her, it's a result of her own internal issues of self-worth as a likely result of not knowing her true parentage. Her anger and vitriol is covering up her own vulnerability. Her thinking is unclear, clouded by her strong emotions. Her haircut is an indication of this rebellious spirit. She is still young though, and perhaps when she matures, she will realize that He-Man kept his secret to protect her and the kingdom. If Skeletor knew He-Man was Prince Adam, he could then hurt those close to him, such as Tila, in order to get to He-Man. The darkness of Subternia represents Tila's inner fear, which she must face in order to find the light within herself, as represented by the sword. Again, the sword represents the soul, truth, and light. It is a metaphor for inner strength and willpower, that inner light that resides in us all. Subternia represents the shadow self of consciousness. As Skeletor symbolizes the darkness, his magic staff is required to open its gates. Once one faces the darkness though, it dissipates and no longer becomes dark. Light represents love, and the darkness means being unable to see the love. Just because it is dark, it doesn't mean it's empty or that there is no light. There is light, literally. If you look at the electromagnetic spectrum, the light we are able to perceive is only a very small percentage of the light that actually exists. The darkness in each of us is that part of our consciousness that is blind to love and clouded by fear. When Tila goes to Bruternia, we meet King Grayskull, who is He-Man's ancestor and the original so-called He-Man to find and wield the Sword of Power. The original He-Man bears a symbol that represents the sun. King Grayskull also wears a representation of the sun. Why? Because they both represent light. He-Man's name is Adam, the same name as the first man of the Bible, the prototypical human male, the original man. And as He-Man's first ancestor and a king, King Grayskull is another prototypical emblem of divine masculinity. Bruternia symbolizes heaven. But more than that, it seems to be a realm for those whose great sacrifices have elevated these souls to become gods. The H on He-Man's chest could also be seen to symbolize heroism. And in the heavens of Bruternia, there is also the powerful wizard, literally named Hero, who helps forge the Sword of Power. Hero is King Grayskull's son, therefore also He-Man's ancestor, showing that Adam comes from a long line of hero archetypes. He-Man represents the divine masculinity in that he has all the physical power of a human male, but is not overbearing and domineering. He is not ruled by the ego, unlike Skeletor, who conversely represents actual toxic masculinity. And just like Clark Kent, out of his humility and not wanting to be seen or treated as superior to others, when He-Man is not needed, he just enjoys a laid-back life as Prince Adam. That's why he's able to bear all of the power in the universe without being corrupted by it. The soft colors of his clothes indicate his non-aggression and not needing to dominate others. True strength is not necessarily physical, it's an inner strength. Within everyone lies a sort of power and the ability to overcome difficult obstacles. 
Orko is the heart, soul, and possibly best representation of the essence of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe cartoon. Orko symbolizes the purity, innocence, and difficulty of childhood. His magic represents imagination and joy, and as a young soul, he is still learning while making many mistakes along the way. He has no face because he is every face. He is the spirit of the joy of childhood. Eternia is that eternal inner place of innocence where, yes, there are scary and dark experiences, but there are also light experiences which always succeed at the end. His symbol is the O, the circle, one of the most primal, if not the most primal, symbol of sacred geometry. Sacred geometry means a foundational form or shape that can be found everywhere in nature. There are not so-called perfect circles in nature, but we can see the influence of the circle and sphere everywhere. The circle is a symbol of the soul, and Orko is that childlike soul in each of us, searching and yearning for the joy of something pure and innocent. The circle is that secret boarded off dimension of Eternia, the child's own private inner reality. In a world filled with so much darkness, getting in touch with this innocence is essential. We are all children, and the things that happen to us in childhood affect us for the rest of our lives. Interestingly, in the original cartoon, Orko was voiced by Lou Scheimer, the executive producer who was key in making He-Man appropriate and positive for young children. My dad's favorite character right there is Orko and his beloved. And I really think it says the most about him. He really was kind of Orko in his own way. If there's one thing better than being a great magician, it's being alive and having great friends like you. Orko is the soul of the Masters of the Universe, Universe. I hope you all enjoyed that. If you did like it, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for listening. Elevate consciousness constantly.